So now we're going to be uh, doing Galileo's equations of motion. But before we start that, we are uh, going to tell a little bit of Galileo Galilei. Galileo Galilei was the first person to combine physics and mathematics into one. He's the one that proved Aristotle wrong. Aristotle's theory was the rock falls to the ground because the rock likes the ground. The feather doesn't really like the ground, so it, it takes longer for the feather to touch the ground than the rock because... The, the feather doesn't like the ground that much. That was Aristotle's theory. But Galileo proved it wrong. Galileo actu actually discovered that um, the, a feather has the same fall rate as a rock. The reason why a feather falls slower is because of air friction. The rock, had, the rock bursts through the air friction while the feather floats on the air friction. So that's why the feather flows slower than the rock. So motion. So this is bas this diagram basically means so at the very start when it's at its very starting point, the velocity the first velocity is v zero. V zero is just a name. It's called velocity zero. It's just a name. And then it's an x. The position is x zero, which is just a random. It's it's the very start of thing. The time is x zero. It's, x zero is just a name, so you can name anything you want. So at the t time t, so at like a certain amount of time t time, it will reach. The, there's a new velocity, which is velocity one. It's just a name as well. You can name it anything you want. But this just v one is just basically a velocity different to v zero, which is the first velocity. And then x one x one means that it's changed position. It's changed position, so that's the first position. X0 was the first position, and X1 was the second position. So, imagine a, like, a surface with no friction, and there's a ball on the surface, and you roll it, and then that ball never gets any more force, and no friction slowing down. That ball will move as something that's called a constant speed. A constant speed is when something moves at a speed that doesn't slow down or doesn't get slower or get faster. Speed is basically how uh, how much distance something can travel in a certain amount of time. Um, and the formula for speed is V velocity or speed, whatever you want to call it, equals to Distance over time. Here, let's give you. Here's an example. A rabbit runs ten meters in two seconds. Its its speed is ten meters per two seconds. So in two seconds, it will run ten meters. But we can actually make this more accurate. Ten meters divided by two is five meters. So the rabbit's more accurate speed is five meters per second. So this five meters per second basically means that every second the rabbit will travel five meters. And also the distance is basically the accumulation of speed over time. D equal V times T means how like V, 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 V plus V plus V plus V T times. So it's basically accumulating, and V is velocity. So it's basically accumulating V, or the velocity, velocity is speed. So it's basically accumulating the speed over time. So distance is how far something travel per unit of time. So like, example of distance is like one centimeter. If I step one centimeter in one second, I travel one centimeter in one second. Now the formula or the equation for distance is d equal v times t or distance equal to velocity times time. I'll show you an example of how that works. So let's say try to figure out the time, okay? And we know the the velocity is three meters per second. Three meters per second. And the and he traveled three meters per second 
for let's say four seconds okay like that now for four seconds now to compute the distance we do three meters per second times four seconds now four now now meters per second times second so the two s's count each other out and actually make meters and then three times four is twelve so that's your answer so the answer to um the answer to if the velocity is three meters per second and he traveled four four seconds of doing three meters per second he, tra he traveled 12 meters in total and that's how you get um the the distance so acceleration is a rate it measures how speed changes in time acceleration or short for it is a is equal to the difference in speed divided by time this is equal to v1 the new time no, the new velocity minus these the old velocity or the starting velocity divided by time this can also be written as v1 equal to the the starting velocity plus acceleration times time acceleration times time means a a plus a plus a plus a t times and it's basically adding it to v0 so uh th so after you have this a plus a plus a you add it to the starting velocity and it'll give you the new velocity now we're going to go on to some examples to so you can see better open powerpoint okay so the uh Acceleration be, can be written as a formula A equals to delta V over delta T. This basically means acceleration is equal to the changes in uh, velocity over the changes in time. So if we plug in some random number, you, as you can see, this equation will work. This can also be written as uh, V1 minus V0 over t1 minus t0 which is basically the same thing as i just told you so let's plug in some random number and see if it works so we can so let's say uh dv is equal to the difference in time is equal to five and let's say the difference in time is equal to let's say one because right now we're going to start off with the easy example and it's going to get harder for the second example so if dv is five and dt is one it can be also written as a equal to 5 over 1 because we're just re replacing dv and dt with the numbers because it's equivalent to the same thing so at first you're going to do this thing which is 5 divided by 1 which is obviously 5 so so we can write this as a equal to 5 which means this kid is accelerating at 5 meters per second like this so before we get into the coding stuff, we want to do a quick summary of what we of the theory. So d equal to v times t. This basically means that there are t copies of v. So like v, v plus v plus v plus v plus v t times. So this is why d is equal to the summative of v times t. Likewise, v equal to a times t is equal to a plus a plus a plus a t times, like his. This can this is also this is also why the summation, the accum or the accumulation of v is equal to a times t. So here we have the speed function. So this function basically has two um two point two uh things. It is the acceleration and the time. This this function basically is the start. This is basically is telling you to add v one, which is the new point, the new velocity is equal to the starting velocity plus the acceleration times the time. To get the distance of a function that the speed is waving around the place, you get the average velocity. To get the average velocity, you get the the starting velocity and the ending velocity. Add them together. So like the the ending velocity, starting velocity, you add them together, plus them, and you divide two or cut it in half. 
you divide it by two, and that's how you get the average velocity. So this is basically what this function does. This one is velocity average one, which is basically just um, it's the same. It's it still gives you the um the starting velocity, but but instead of giving you the ending velocity like the last one did, this one, it gives you the ending time. From the ending time, you can also you compute the ending velocity, and then from and then with the ending velocity, you can do the starting velocity plus the ending velocity. You combine them together and you cut it in half. So that's basically what this function does. So the distance to function, which is uh, which is the name of this function, is basically just timing the velocity average by time, and you get the distance. So this one is just plotting it. It's, it's going much faster. It's going uh, way faster than the other one. This is... Because this is called constant acceleration. Constant acceleration is ex basically just accelerating at a constant pace over and over again. Because instead of applying the distance one function, we applied the distance two function. Unlike, this one applied the velocity average one function, we applied the distance two function here. So that's basically what this does. And then the and then now let's plot the two plots on the same curve. We're gonna be comparing this one to this one. So to plot them on the same curve, we do we we first set the t values, zero to twenty, then we do the trays is just the name known. This is the scatter the scatter function which uh, scatters the points around the, the the graph, the x values are going to be set as t, and the y values are going to do the distance one function. The distance one function is the constant speed function. It's up here. The distance one function basically locks the speed for zero, so the t stuff is, and the t is the time. So it's basically zero times five, one times five, two times five, three times five, four times five, five times five, all the way to 20 times five. Because that's the T. Do this should give us this should give us like 5, 10, 15, 20. 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Like that. And then this one, trace one is just another A. Scatter function, scatter the points. T. And then but this one is applying the distance to function. Distance to function is the constant acceleration function. So it's constantly accelerating up, and then oh, by these 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 functions here, those are called the there's a name function. They just name it. So like constant speed is the blue one, the blue one, that one, the slow one, and constant acceleration is the orange one going up. And then we pl and then this is plotting it on the same graph. So we do this trace one, trace one, which is that trace zero, and trace one. Pulling them in there and then shift it. There you go. Um, and then that will plot them on the same graph. And now you can see the difference between constant speed and constant acceleration.